This video explains how to use discounted cash flow as a method of investment appraisal. The discounted cash flow method accounts for the fact that potential returns diminish in value to a business as you move further into the future. So a million pounds in hand now is worth significantly more than the expectation of a million pound return in say five years time. And discounted cash flow works by using a discount factor to value any expected future returns in terms of what they would be worth today. And the higher the discount factor used, the less valuable the returns in the future will be viewed. And so the more profitable the investment will need to be in order to be considered acceptable. So the table here shows you the figures that you would need to calculate discounted cash flow for an investment providing returns over a five year timeline. And included are the 5%, 10% and 15% discount factors. And we'll now use the 10% discount factor to compare these three different investment projects in this table with project one costing 4 million, project two costing 6 million and project three costing three million pounds and they're all providing us with the returns shown over five years. The steps to go through for this method of investment appraisal are first to line up the discount table with the expected returns from the project as we've done here and we multiply each yearly return by its discount factor to find the discounted cash flow for each year. So we've multiplied one million pounds by 0.91 to find the discounted cash flow for year one of 0.91 million. And we've done the same all the way down the table. And what we're saying here is the expectation of a million pounds in a year is worth the same to us as 0.91 million pounds today using that 10% discount factor. A million pounds in two years is worth the same to us as 0.83 million pounds today and so on. And secondly, we add up all of the discounted cash flows, remembering to minus the initial outlay to find what we call the net present value of the investment project. And so this is showing us the immediate value in today's money of the entire project. And if this is positive, it suggests we should go ahead with the investment and the higher the better if we're comparing more than one project as we are here if it's negative then we're better off holding on to the cash and we shouldn't go ahead with that investment project so with project one we've totaled up these discounted cash flows we've minus the initial investment cost of four million pounds and that's given us a net present value of minus 0.21 million pounds so that would suggest that this is not a project that we should go ahead with based on that 10% discount factor. We can do the same steps now for project two, multiplying each annual net return by the discount factor to find the discounted cash flow for each year, then totaling these discounted cash flows, remembering to minus the initial outlay this time of six million pounds. And that gives us our net present value in this case of 0.746 million pounds which is better than project one it's positive which suggests that this would be a good investment to go ahead with but we just need to check project three now as well same steps for project three then we've multiplied the the net return by the discount factor to get our discounted cash flow we add those up minusing the three million pound initial investment and that's given us a net present value of 1.486 million pounds so that's positive which is good and it's the highest of the three investment projects so that suggests that based on our discounted cash flow method of investment appraisal that project three is the best project that we should go ahead with here Using discounted cash flow is a really good method of investment appraisal because it accounts for both overall profitability of the investment and also the timing of the cash flows as well. So in terms of our other methods of investment appraisal, payback period only looks at timing by asking how long to repay the initial investment cost. An average rate of return only looks at profitability, ignoring the fact that expected future returns 
aren't as valuable as more immediate ones. And so discounted cash flow covers both of these factors. Now we showed a table at the start with five, 10 and 15% discount factors. And it's really flexible with, with discounted cash flow in that a business can choose the most appropriate discount factor for them. So if they're really risk averse, a higher discount factor will mean only the surest and best investment projects will yield a positive net present value. And equally, they can look at what's happening in the economy as well, particularly with interest rates, and adjust their discount factor accordingly based on that as well. Now, the downside to this is the choice of discount factor can then become a bit arbitrary. And a project might give a positive net present value with a 5% discount factor, but a negative net present value with a 10% discount factor. And who's to really say which one should be used? And finally, this idea of discount factors and net present values, it's all a bit more tricky to explain and, and interpret compared to payback period and average rate of return, which are both really simple and straightforward.